All right, it's time for another Heavy Metal Gamer video blog, and I want to give my thoughts on the Intellivision Amico and some recent shit that Tommy Tallarico has said about, I don't know, it's just so fucking ridiculous. Now, if you remember during my Heavy Metal Gamer Show podcast episode 34, I did somewhat mention the Intellivision Amico and how I was 50-50 on it. And really, I had the slightest interest because one, Earthworm Jim was getting a new game, but I also felt that this is a niche console for a niche market. It's not for people that are big into modern gaming systems. I mean, let's be real here. Unless you are Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft, your console isn't going anywhere. Now, Intellivision Amico is going to be released in October of 2020. It's developed by Intellivision Entertainment, which Tommy Tallarico is really pushing this console out there, and rightfully so, since he formed this new company using the Intellivision name, and is also president. He's been doing many interviews on live streams with a variety of YouTubers like Smash JT, Review Tech USA, and quite a few others. Basically, if he can do an interview and talk about the console, he's going to do it. Although some of these YouTubers have been called out from people like Pat the NES Punk and his boy Ian. They called out Review Tech USA, and you can find numerous videos about that, and even Rich talking about it himself. And, and I've given my thoughts on a podcast episode about Review Tech USA. And maybe Rich as a person himself isn't a bad guy, but when it comes to the whole YouTube thing, I'm just not a fan. But I am going to play some clips from a live stream interview he did with Tommy Tallarico later in this video, because there are things Tommy said in that interview that are just batshit fucking insane. Now, Pat and Ian have said that Review Tech USA is being a shill about the Intellivision Amico, because he was wearing an Intellivision t-shirt, and then he has a mug and all that type of shit. And there's other interviews done where people have been wearing Intellivision Amico t-shirts. There's been Smash JT. He's got a pretty decent following, and some of you might like him and might hate him. Me personally, I don't hate him, but there are a lot of things that I disagree in his videos, and there are some shady things there, especially when you're wearing an Amico shirt during an interview. Not only that, Smash JT, who went to Tommy's house, played it, and even rode in Tommy's Ferrari. He does say he wasn't paid, and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. I just think it's a little odd that you go to his house, ride in his Ferrari, it's almost like he's provoking you to give good opinions of it. Personally, if I'm going to get a sneak preview of the console, I just wanna see the console, give it a try, and that's it. I don't want to ride in Tommy's Ferrari. I don't want some dinner or anything like that. And I sure as hell wouldn't be doing interviews wearing an Amico t-shirt. To be honest, if I was offered the shirt, I'd say, no, I don't want it. For one, what the fuck am I going to do with it? I'm not going to wear it. I don't wear any gaming t-shirts or anything like that. I wear metal band t-shirts. And on top of that, if you're going to wear a t-shirt like that in an interview, you better expect people to question you. And I don't know if those that are interviewing can't seem to figure out that people are going to call you out on that shit. And they're going to say it's very skeptical. And they, even some are going to give you downright hate and call you out for it. And I say rightfully so. Also, I noticed some have skipped around questions with Tommy. But most recently, Tommy has said two different things and even more than I'm going to cover in this video that really make me shake my head and wonder where the fuck does he come up with this shit. But let's get into a little bit about the console. The retail price is $249, $279 for a limited edition and $299 for the Founders Edition. Five of the six games that have been announced will be preloaded on the console for free. And they are Shark Shark, Astro Smash, Skiing, Cornhole, and Farkle. But there is a variety of other games that will be later released that you can buy between the $2.99 and $9.99 price tag. Now, if you look at those games and you think people are going to be interested in buying your console, you better throw some more games on there that people will actually know because that's not going to get me to buy your console. Tommy Tallarico says 20% of the games will be updated, reimagining versions of classic video games. Another 20% original new games. Another 20% sports and recreation another 20% is board, dice, card, word, and puzzle games, and another 20% educational. And that's fine, you've got a nice variety of different games. Granted, not everybody's gonna like them, but hey, you have it for everyone. There's nothing wrong with that. The controller has a dial pad, touch pad type of deal that you can spin around and all that shit, and there's really no buttons on it. I mean, there's some buttons on the top or the side or whatever the fuck you wanna call it. Personally, I would rather have something that's a regular controller or at least has buttons on it like a regular controller, and there's a little screen on it and all that shit. That already is going to be a turnoff to most gamers. I mean, if you look at the Wii U, a lot of people didn't like that. A lot of people didn't like the Wii with the motion controls, but they got used to it. And even some don't like the way the Switch is, but at least they have a way to play the game or they can get a controller for it that doesn't have that. 
Same thing with the Wii U. Of course, the Switch is doing a lot better than the Wii U because there's a lot of good games on it. I mean, if you want to cater to the casual gamers, even that group will be confused as hell. Now, from the interviews I have watched, Tommy seems to have this mindset that this thing is going to sell very well. Once again, I think the only ones that will be interested in this, and you might hear me say this quite a few times throughout this video, will be the retro gamers that like retro consoles and know the Intellivision name, retro console hoarders that don't actually play the consoles or games, and people that will likely play whatever. Ever. Now, the first comment I want to talk about here is Tommy talking about gaming racists. That's right. He has used the term gaming racists. Here's the clip. So when people say to me, look, Nintendo has casual games. I say casual couch co-op or casual multi. I say, great. What games are they? Overcooked, um, Castle Crashers, Animal Crossing. People will say Animal Crossing's a, a casual game. Now, again... Picture a non-gamer trying to play Overcooked, trying to play Castle Crashers, and even Animal Crossing. People who are hardcore gamers don't understand that Animal Crossing is casual to them, but to somebody who's a hyper-casual or a non-gamer... That's a hardcore that's game. The, I was just about to say that. That's a yes. hardcore game. Yes, and that's the big disconnect that these hardcore elitists, and again, there's some of them in here saying nasty things about us uh, going through, and, it, and it's not the majority, it's a handful of, of, of douchebags, um, and, and they're all hardcore elitists, not hardcore gamers, hardcore gamers like our system too, but these elitists, they're racists, they're literally gaming racists, meaning whatever I believe and whatever I think, that's what's going to happen. No one's going to buy your stupid machine because I don't like those kind of games. So that means the rest of the world's not going to like them either. Well, well that's you, that. You, you brought you know? up an interesting point with like my, my. I bought my son a Switch. He can't play Super Mario Odyssey because he's three. So he'll. He, it's. I mean, he right. can play it, but it's not. Whereas if you have something with a simplistic controller like that, I get what you're saying. Where he could just, you know, it, it kind of explains itself instead of having to have the game explained. Now, a non-gamer isn't going to play very many games, and yes, Animal Crossing and Overcooked can be picked up easily and are easy to understand. Even casual gamers, like you say. He also brings up elitist, and I want to say this about the whole terms casual and hardcore gamers. I think it's stupid. This is just a personal opinion on that. If you pick up a game and you enjoy it and you play it and you play it quite a bit or here and there, you are a gamer, no matter what. And like I said, to me, Animal Crossing and Overcooked are easy games to pick up and easy to understand, like I said. So it doesn't matter if you're a casual or hardcore gamer. If you like games, you're going to fucking play them. Now, I'm one that gives a lot of games a try. There are a lot of gamers out there that won't give Animal Crossing or even Overcooked a try because they think it's a kid's game or a baby's game and that fucking shit is ridiculous but i'll talk about that a little bit later so let's talk about this whole gaming racist comment after bringing the word elitist in does he not understand what a racist is the term racist is someone who hates a race a skin color and someone who wants them dead basically a piece of shit so are you saying anybody that doesn't like the Intellivision Amico is a racist? That's basically what you're saying here, and that's fucking stupid. If you want to use any terms, it's gaming elitists, fanboys, maybe even call them snobs. I mean, people that don't like a game or console are not going around saying, oh, I want all these people to die. They're a bunch of pieces of shit. You know that whole mindset. And if they do, they're mentally unstable. And he says that some people are going around saying, nobody's going to buy your stupid machine. Well, to be honest, people are not going to buy it if they're not interested in it. People People are not interested in the Xbox Ones, the PlayStation 4, hell, even PC gaming, and there's some people that don't like the Nintendo Switch. There's people that are not going to like everything, but that doesn't make them a fucking gaming racist. Now somebody in the chat called out Tommy for being a social justice warrior. Uh, somebody just said, I sound like a social justice warrior. Uh, you couldn't be farther from the truth. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm an I know East that. Coast Italian and, and I'm the most unpolitically correct person on the planet. 
in a way, if you're going to say gaming racist, it does kind of make you sound like a social justice warrior. I mean, if you've never sat and listened to them blabber stupid shit, they throw around the word racist, sexist, and other words like no tomorrow. Personally, I don't think Tommy Tallarico is a social justice warrior, and he even claimed he's far from it. And it's funny because I've been called a social justice warrior quite a few times recently. People that actually meant it, and I'm far from a social justice warrior. You don't see me going around calling people sexist and racist like I'm drinking water. Now I want you to listen to this next part where he goes on about having fun and not being triggered. People are like, they're tweaking out right now. They're like, oh dude, you're this and that. We're having fun here. Give me a break, right? If you, if you get, you know, everyone wants to say, oh, he said this, he said that. Can we have fun? Are we talking about video oh, games? We're going to have people who are taking this too seriously can go f themselves. Like seriously, we're going we're to have fun because we're going to go into the, the to the questions now, both regular chat and super chat. Tommy so. got triggered. People are saying I got triggered. No, I'm just having fun and being passionate. The folks in there that are that are that are peeing their pants right now. People are saying, "Chill out, man. Chill out." Again, if you can't take a joke, log the hell off. Like, see, come on, we're having fun here. I'm going over the top. People are like so serious about people. Whatever. You just called people that are elitists or fanboys gaming racists. Come on now, Tommy. You have to be smarter than this. But it doesn't end here about saying ridiculous, stupid shit. You can't be calling people gaming racist. This is going to turn people away from your console that even had an interest in it. Even slightly interested. Granted, you're going to have the nut huggers that, oh, I'm going to buy this. Oh, this is so cool. And then you sit here and you hear these people say this and you're like, you're going to buy this console and you're going to play it all the time or you're going to play it three or four times and get bored of it because there is no actual games that are worthy of owning right at first. At least with Nintendo, Sony, and even Microsoft, you have games on launch that are worthy of playing, at least to some people. Now, it all depends on personal opinions. Now, this next part really makes me shake my fucking head, and I want you to get a load of this shit right here. You have the PlayStation, your Xbox, and you know what the great thing is about the Xbox and the PlayStation and Nintendo? You can get all that gore and blood and violence as super realistic as you like. So you wouldn't like violence on our machine because, you know, it's not as, it doesn't look as photorealistic. So, so that's a thing. Look, you know, if you if you're into games with with blood and violence and sexual content and and kids in sexual compromising positions and rape uh, on the Nintendo, if, if 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 that's what you want, then buy a Switch. You know, uh, just don't. You know, it's it's not what we're into, and that's fine. I'm not against that stuff. I'm just saying it's not for us. It's one of the things that makes us unique. And like I said earlier, it's the number two most important thing when we do our focus group testing. The number two thing, number one is simplicity, and number two is having it be safe for their kids. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Disneyland doesn't have strip strip joints in, in it. Maybe they should, though. <laughs> but uh, all kidding aside, like, yeah. Say, we'll hey, 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 let, let's face it, Rich. You know damn well, both me and you, if we had the opportunity to get a lap dance from The Little Mermaid, we'd be all over it. True or false? Good point. Good point. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to deny that. Holy shit, Tommy. A good chunk of gamers like violent video games. Now on the Intellivision Amico website, it says that their games will have no bad language, graphic violence, blood, or sexual content. Every game on the Amico is rated E for everyone or E10+. So basically it's a console for kids. Earlier in this video, you know when I mentioned how people called Nintendo consoles for kids, a baby's console and all that bullshit? Granted they do have your cutesy games like Animal Crossing and Mario and all that shit. But as far back as I remember, they have had violent video games to some extent. There was Mortal Kombat, granted it was censored, but there was also Doom on the Super Nintendo, and then later on on the Nintendo 64 you had Conker's Bad Fur Day, Doom 64, you had wrestling games that had blood in it, Resident Evil 2, the list goes on, and then you have later consoles, like the Nintendo Wii had Manhunt 2 on it, granted that game was kind of censored a bit, but it was still violent as hell. Tommy, where in the fuck do you see games that have kids in sexual compromising positions on the Nintendo Switch? I mean, sure games have scenes that could be moments of rape, not with kids in them, but that is part of the story. It's not just thrown in there randomly. Also, you compare Disneyland and strip clubs, but you go on about getting a lap dance by Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid is for kids. So what the fuck? You just made the most hypocritical statement of the goddamn interview. But kids in sexual compromising positions? I don't think I've ever played a violent video game with that in it. 
So I don't know what games you are playing, especially on the Nintendo Switch. Granted, I haven't played every Switch game, I don't own one, but I have friends that do, and I've played a good handful of games off that console. Are you saying this shit just to get sales or your name out there? Now I want you to listen to this clip here and listen to what he based his info off of. So so what one guy just said, hey Rich, aren't you gonna call me out because I said there were rape games on the Nintendo Switch? Um, that's a fact, buddy. Um, sorry. I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not, uh, anyone can Google that. I mean, there's a wall street journal article that came out where, you know, Nintendo, I know it's on steam, but I don't know about the switch. I'll look it up right now. Yeah, absolutely. AO games are on the Nintendo switch and in different countries, they allow different things as well too. Um, so absolutely Sony and Microsoft do not allow you know, as, as much the, the most violent and graphic games for home consoles is the Nintendo switch. And I'm, and I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not trying to downplay them or, 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 or call them out. But, I mean, but it's, it's a fact, you know? So anyway, I can't, conf- I'm looking adult only games, Nintendo. I, I can sit here, here, Rich, do you want me to send it to you? Yeah. I'll, I'll, the, uh, you want, you want to see some screen? Let me see if I can see that. I can't see them right now, but yeah. I mean, I'll send it Is to it? you on. Uh, I can send them to you on. Uh... I don't know. I've never. Ever people are saying, "Oh shit, they're real." So I guess they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and again, that's fine. You know, I don't fine, know. But... I I don't know. Like, and I'm not gonna, you know, confirm or deny. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So he said the guy who said that says thank you. I honestly didn't know that. Thank for the answer, Tommy. So that that's cool. He's you know, but, but yes, that's, you know, again, I, it's just something that's there and, and I, I'm not uh, saying anything bad against her. I'm against that. This and that, it's just not stuff that, that we're going to have on our machine. That's all. Well, agony, but, is, but don't agony is the worst. It, it, it's, um, it's, it, it, it features environmental storytelling agony. I know they're talking, that game is such garbage anyway, though, but yes, I get, okay. Okay. Now I know what you're saying. Yes. Agony. I think like the art, like this stuff, because you're meant to be in hell. I have it for the, I have it. Yeah, for, yeah, and, and and to be clear, yeah, the object of the game isn't to go around raping people. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Yeah. Raping everybody. <laughs> oh, up God. In here. Um, it, but, but it's, yeah, it's part of the storytelling. So, you know, that's fine. And, and again, this is a game that's not on PlayStation and Xbox, but is on the Switch. <laughs> Seriously, the Wall Street Journal. You know how many times the Wall Street Journal has went full on social justice warrior bullshit when it comes to gaming or even gaming YouTubers? Look up how they have talked about PewDiePie, throwing around that he's a Nazi and all that bullshit. Listening to the Wall Street Journal is like listening to Kotaku and taking their word as golden. The only game you might have anything to stand on for being a violent, controversial game on the Nintendo Switch is Hatred. It's rumored to be coming to the Nintendo Switch. I mean, that's one of the most controversial games in recent times. Now, the whole thing about rape in video games, the only one I can think of, and this game is on the Nintendo Switch, is Hotline Miami 2 as it's part of the Hotline Miami collection. There is a scene, if not a few scenes in that game that are rape scenes but it's not just randomly thrown in there it's part of the story and that game is dark it's crude and you know what it's on every fucking console and pc you can get it on the playstation 4 i think you can get it on the xbox one but you're calling out the nintendo switch Sure, Tommy Tallarico is a legendary person in gaming. The music he has done in a lot of retro games is awesome, but I think he's a bit on the batshit crazy side, more so in recent times. He acts like this is going to sell over 50,000 consoles. I don't see it hitting five or even 8,000. I'd be very surprised if it hits those number, and sure, people will buy it. People will buy into the bullshit, but saying stupid shit like I have shown in this video blog, and what's even funny, when he was talking about the whole rape and all that type of shit, even Rich couldn't find the name of the game, and he even questioned it. So why didn't you just mention the name of the game in the fucking interview? Because you'd get called out for being full of bullshit, right? Sure, this will be better than the Ouya. Because let's face it, that was a load of garbage. But even the Ouya had uses as, as a emulation machine, to a point. The Atari VCS gets mentioned in this interview. Sure, it might be as good as that. But how many people are talking about that other than a comparison to your Intellivision console? I sure am not seeing much of it. A lot of the channels I follow don't really talk about it much anymore. But I will give Tommy Tell Rico this. 
He's actually showing off the console and what it looks like, and giving more in-depth on it, compared to the Coleco Chameleon, which was a scam in the start. But I really hope you have some sort of backup plan when this thing doesn't sell worth a shit. Although the retro game console hoarders, like I mentioned earlier, may save your ass on it. I mean, I'm sure they'll buy five or six of them, and at least five of those will sit on the shelves and collect dust. At the end of the day, the idea of the Intellivision Amico was interesting, but when you go around saying dumb shit like gaming racists and calling people butthurt because they don't like what you're doing and calling them haters, trolls, telling them to fuck off is not going to help you with the sales. And you know when I think of games that are rape games, the only ones that come to mind would be Rape Lay, which is a PC game, and maybe that game Rape Day that was actually talked about in early 2019 that I don't even think ever got released on Steam. I think Steam said fuck you, basically. You are really grasping at straws on that one. Now another thing he likes to say is, well if you don't like it, don't buy it. Or if you like violent video games, the Amico is not for you. But the way you act towards the criticism is ridiculous, and that's going to turn a lot of people away. Now one more thing, you tell people, well why not give it a try? There's been a handful of people that have come to your house to try the console out. Like I mentioned, Smash JT. Now why did he do that? Because he lives near you. Not everyone is able to come to California, especially in times right now with the whole coronavirus shit. So we can't come to your house and play your new console. Now Pat and Ian should have took the offer, but them two fucking miserable piles of shit are just miserable piles of shit. But someone like myself that doesn't live in California, and anyone else that is being critical on this, we're not going to pay $249 to $299 for a console and not like it. If nobody I know is going to buy it, it's kind of tough for me to actually check your console out. Anyways, what is your thoughts on the uh, Intellivision Amico and the whole Tommy Tallarico thing? Do you think it's going to be a good thing? Are you interested in it? Are you not interested in it? I'm sure you can find numerous interviews out there, and some of them just make me cringe with how people don't go into the questions and really hit them hard with the questions. They really dance around the bullshit. But that's not a surprise coming from some of these YouTubers. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video blog. I'm sure I'm going to get some shit for this, but hey, it wouldn't be the first time, won't be the last. Thanks for watching.